and enjoy the action at St Mirren against heads with Stephen Thompson, Michael Stewart and Rob McLean. Cheers, Kenny. Yeah, for the third time this season, it is Hibs and St Mirren squaring up to each other. We must be guaranteed goals tonight when you think there have been 11 in the two meetings already. First game of the season, uh, St Mirren won that one by three goals to two at Easter Road. And then the League Cup uh, meeting of these two finished 4-2 in favour of Hibs that time. It's an 11th game of the campaign for St Mirren, looking to strengthen their position in third place, get a little bit closer to second place. And uh, I was just wondering, with it being their 11th game and the fact this is the second meeting with Hibs, who they haven't played so far. And the answer to that question is Ross Kenty. Uh, that game postponed earlier. It will be rescheduled shortly. So there's a trip to Dingwall coming up for uh, St Mirren. But they've got uh, bags of uh, momentum behind them, beaten at Celtic Park in the last midweek. But no great disgrace there. They were ahead in that game as well. Joe Newell to the corner flag for uh, Hibbs, looking to get an early ball in the box. Just stabbed at it and uh, plucked out of the air by Zach Hemming in goal for St Mirren. One change in the home team if you've just joined us. Mikael Mandron back up front. Olesanya on the bench and a couple of switches for Hibbs with George Campbell replacing Martin Boyle. And uh, a first start for Rory Whitaker, the 16-year-old, at right back for uh, Hibbs, replacing Lewis Miller. Just the two changes from the team beaten in the League Cup semi-final at the weekend. Back on league business here, Rocky Bashiri for Hibbs. Plays it back to David Marshall with Mandron. We're going to close the goalkeeper down. Fired down the middle, headed away by Gogic. Conor McMenamin looking to collect the ball, just gets away from him. Back with the goalkeeper, McMenamin, who scored that St Mirren goal at Celtic Park last Wednesday. Celtic winning by two goals to one in the end, but there are only two defeats St Mirren in their first ten in the league have been against Rangers and Celtic. Plenty to like about how Stephen Robinson's team have opened up the season. Can they keep on doing what they've been doing so far as the ball is flicked in behind left-hand side for Jair Tavares keeps it well under pressure support from Obita pressure from uh, McMenamin and the ball goes back from halfway to Marshall and it goes in the direction of Rory Whitaker wasn't the best pass had to hurry the youngster but he managed to get there first and back it goes to Will Fish with Dylan Levin. Levitt popping up in between the two centre-backs to start things off for Hibs. To his left is Bushiri on the touchline of Bita. Halfway line in Paisley to Jair Tavares. Does well to squeeze his way between a couple of challenges. Now Levitt opening play out, finding Eli Yuan on the right-hand side. Up ahead of him is Whitaker already, the youngster marauding down that flank and looking to combine with you and the ball goes out for a hip's throw. Looked a foul to me to be honest with you, I thought it was going to be shoved in the back but it's great to see the youngster getting given an opportunity to start the game tonight I don't think it happens enough in our Scottish top league so fantastic night for him and of course as you said that yeah, lo lost, lost his footing <laughs> but he's a big big unit isn't he for 16 he is you know I mean at that age you know the my son's 15 and they can look so young and some can look like men so there's a big difference for it when uh, the kids are kind of going through their di different growing stages at that time but uh, I, you know as I said just to reiterate it's brilliant to see uh, Nick Montgomery giving him the opportunity to go and show what he can do Taylor plays the ball forward for St Mirren cleared by Jordan Obita Jair Tavares again sometimes when he looks to be losing it he's got that knack of just getting control of the ball against all odds and he's done it again there and Hibbs retain possession Levitt looking to direct operations from the central midfield for Hibbs the ball goes wide again for Whitaker. Joe Newell is a uh, partner in crime for Levitt in the central area for Hibbs and both very capable of uh, directing passes and uh, dictating the play back from Obita to Bashiri and again with David Marshall in his luminous outfit and goal out to Will Fish 
talking of uh, Whitaker, it was interesting here, Nick Montgomery, he's, he's come off the bench in games against Celtic and Rangers and also in that League Cup semi-final at the weekend. There is plenty of faith in the youngster and this is his first start. Left-hand side, defensively for Hibbs, is Rocky Bashiri. Nothing to do much happening up ahead, so just stays patient and the ball goes back to Marshall and it's switched across to the other side. Patient play from Hibbs, looking for their first win in a while. Six without a win, although four of those were draws and they certainly felt unlucky at Hamden at the weekend as their uh, League Cup campaign came to an end. Down the line it goes from Tanzer, looking to pick out Mikael Mandron in attack, but uh, it slips away from him and through to the Hibs keeper, David Marshall. Hibs will be pleased with the way they've started the game. They're getting a lot of touches of the ball, um, an awful lot of possession. St Mirren not really troubled by anything yet, a lot of it sideways and back the way, but certainly keeping the ball well at Hibs. Good strength from Rocky Bushini, the challenge from Mandron in behind. Down went the Hibs central defender, free kick given. And the ball is taken on by Joe Newell into the centre circle he goes. Goalless early on in Paisley between St Mirren and Hibs. Hibs using a long ball down the, the right side, which never looked as if it was going to hit its target. Slides behind, goal kick St Mirren. And Zach Hemming to take it at that successful spell on loan at Kilmarnock. And he's uh, doing well, as Tomo says, a good record of successful goalkeepers in Paisley in recent times. Yeah, it certainly has been, and uh, he's been a great find this season. Really, really impressed with him. It's a good season so far. Richard Taylor on it, just cushions a pass towards Tanzer. Back to Taylor, but body position wasn't going to be able to keep the ball in. It has gone out on the far side for a, a throw-in. How much, Michael, is this about mentality for Hibs tonight, coming off that big disappointment at the weekend? Yeah, it's massive, of course. But, um, as Tomo said, they've, uh, they've started the, the game brightly. The key for Hibs is, as they build this game up, that um, they start to be able to get in behind St Mirren and play some more forward passes, because he's right, a lot of it's been sideways and back towards it uh, at the moment and then Obita trying to play a forward ball there and it just breaks down so they need to have some penetration and cutting edge on their side but uh, St Mirren and Stephen Robinson will not be particularly happy with how the opening few minutes have, have passed no, Just a bit, bit of sloppy stuff in the middle from Mark O'Hara there giving it away Hips have it again down the left side with Obita back he goes Levitt tried to slip a pass through to well cut out and now St Mirren look to get forward Mandron in the centre circle holds it up and rolls the ball out wide for Tanzer lovely ball down the left flank for Mandron it's good movement as well from St Mirren's number 9 in comes the cross ball Fish gets his head to it but it's not convincingly clear it's collected right hand side for Marcus Fraser to swing in across it's cleared but uh, not uh, convincingly again and it was a shooting chance for Tanzer 25 yards out it's gone comfortably wide yeah that's what St Mirren are so good at isn't it getting the ball wide and putting dangerous balls into the box it's not really clear neither of them convincingly when it falls to Tanzer a good 20 to 25 yards out he just hits it into the ground and drags it it's a difficult ball it was kind of on the half volley for him and drags it 20 feet wide of the post it's an already tight midsection. Well, I think it's gone beyond the midsection. It's now in the mid to bottom section of the Premiership. Really tight. Could have been even tighter had St Johnston held on last night. They were two up against Motherwell. And had they got all three points, they'd have settled for one in the end, of course. Well, it was going to be ridiculously tight at the bottom of the table because that would have taken St Johnston to double figures. And it would have uh, meant, for instance, that to Hibs tonight would have been just a point off the bottom going into this one rather than three. It's crazy how tight it is, and it just shows you that there's not a lot between the sides in the division. There really isn't. If you can string a couple of results together, it can fire you right up the league into the European positions, likely, if you 
lose a couple of games, you can find yourself down in trouble. I wonder how long it's going to last like that. Good defending from Gogic on the end of a long ball from Fish. They've uh, played a lot of nice passes, they've had a lot of good possession hibs in the match, but nothing particularly penetrative so far, nothing that's troubled St Mirren and Julie. Fraser at the back, right side of a, a back three, plays it to Hemming and the goalkeeper thumps it forward. Up went McMenamin, up two went Obita, his header have found Newell, and back with central defender Fish. Across to the right side, the teenage Whitaker, infield from uh, you, and he's given that away really cheaply. And uh, St Mirren work it forward to Mandron, a clumsy challenge into the back of him from Fish, and that will be a St Mirren free kick, nil nil in Paisley. Yeah, Ellie, you and you know, you, you just don't know what you're going to get from him at times. He can do the sublime, it can also do the ridiculous, giving the ball away there into Mandron's feet. And it was a definite fill through the back of Mandron, a chance for St Mirren to get the big men up, put a diagonal into the box. Hips off their defensive line, a couple of yards outside the penalty box. Free kick, left-hand side. Tanzer puts a lot of action on it, but he also put a lot of height on it. It's grabbed and then lost by David Marshall. No free kick. Well, it seemed initially that the free kick wasn't going to be given against the challenge on David Marshall. It finally is, and uh, Marshall's taken a sore when he fell awkwardly there. No. Look, I'm of the view at times that goalkeepers are a protected species, but that one was <laughs> that was crazy. I mean, I don't know what the referee was waiting for, and I don't know what it was that eventually changed his mind to, to blow the whistle, but I think it was quite clear that David Marshall had been uh, filled, and it looked like a, a sore one when he came landing down on the on the ground. It would definitely you. be windy. I mean, Alex Gogic kind of files into him. I think it's the fact that... Uh, Marsh is already in the air and kind of off balance when Gogic hits him that then when he lands he can't kind of land in any soft part of his body lands in his back and thankfully he's up on his feet and okay to play again takes the free kick himself plays it out to Fish and he'll switch it across to his central defensive partner Bushiri Levitt takes it away and fires a pass into the feet of Abita on the touchline he just hurries his pass, but it's a mistake by Gogic, and it's gone through to Venter, who turns it back inside, and Josh Campbell celebrates his return to the starting lineup for Hibs with the opening goal. St. Mirren nil Hibs one. It's a terrible, terrible mistake from Gogic. The pass is straight to him from the left back of Dita. It looked like he was starting a motorbike, lifts his foot above the ball. It's then laid into the path by Venta, and it's a simple finish from about 16 yards into the bottom corner. A good finish, um, but a very avoidable goal from St Mirren, and an uncharacteristic mistake from Gogic, who's been so good this season, but on that occasion, a real lapse of concentration has cost St Mirren. Something you don't see very often, it's Tolo is in there, not just from Gogic, but from St Mirren, um, more generally, that they, they seldom gift team's you know easy opportunities but take nothing away from Josh Campbell because it's a really good finish from about the edge of the box a composed pass into the bottom corner and, uh, and Zach Hemming's got no chance but um, yeah you can imagine that uh, Stephen Robinson will be bitterly disappointed with uh, how the uh, how his sides ended up 1-0 down but for Hibs it's a bright start that's now um, been solidified with them being able to convert when they've been on top because uh, they've not really been able to get in behind in trouble, St Mirren, although they were keeping the ball well. So to be able to get their noses in front 1-0, very, very good start for Nick Montgomery and his men. Yeah, you tend not to get gift goals here in Paisley, but that was uh, gift wrapped. It looked a really poor pass from Jordan Obita straight at Alex Gogic, but he somehow took his eye off it. The ball slipped under his boot, and Hibbs certainly capitalised on the mistake, and that is Josh Campbell's fourth goal of the season and it's a, a really significant opening goal in the night 12 minutes in as he side footed past Hemming 1-0 Hibbs and St Mirren have got a free kick out in the left hand side 
very similar position to the one where David Marshall got hit just a, a few moments ago before the goal, another chance to put the ball into the box. So I don't think St Mirren have started the game particularly well. They put those couple of crosses in from open play, but generally, to me, they've started the game slowly. Hibs have definitely started the better side. Just a few yards in from the touchline, left-hand side, midway inside the Hibs half. Tanzer with the free kick into a good area again. It's pretty well defended, though, by Hibbs, who are delighted to come off that losing semi-final with the opening goal in a difficult fixture here in Paisley, but it has been a pretty composed and confident start from Hibbs, and uh, they've taken that big opportunity to get their noses in front. What will be the response from St Mirren? It's another good ball in that one from the wide area from Tanzer. He does have such a fantastic delivery. I think it was actually Richard Taylor who kind of rose but could not direct the ball. Goal was almost looked as though he'd cleared it out of his own box rather than trying to put it towards the Hibernian goal. He gives it plenty, doesn't he, Tanzer, on these free kicks he and does, getting action yeah, on it? He really does. His delivery is superb. Forward goes Marcus Fraser, a driving run down the right, and he gets it back, continuing his run. Jair Tavares tries to get close to him. Rolled back towards Ryan Strain. And Strain clips it into the middle where Richard Taylor has got a little bit of room to have a look, and then he drives with the ball and plays it wide. Tanzer from open play this time tries to get the ball in the box. The cross is blocked and it's gone out for a, a throw in about 10 yards from the corner flag on the St Mirren left-hand side. Paisley team trailing on the night by a goal to nil. Josh Campbell making the difference. So far, one of two changes for Hibbs. Managerial masterstroke might be one description for it. And uh, that long throw is going to be taken by the man who made the mistake leading up to that Hibs goal, Alex Gogic. And his mistakes tend to stand out because he doesn't make too many of them. In comes the long throw then from Gogic for St Mirren. Rocky Bashiri taking charge defensively and uh, powering a header away. Taylor tries to play it back down the line towards Gogic. The ball goes out and it's going to be a Hibs throw. Yeah, it's just been a scrappy start from St Mirren. What are we now? 16 minutes in. I'm looking at Stephen Robinson down in the technical area. It does not look a happy man. Obviously, the goal is highly avoidable, but I think generally I'd like to see more tempo from his team. On the attack for Hibbs, left hand side, Jair Tavares facing up to Ryan Strain. Good defending from uh, the Australian and uh, keeps possession of the ball and plays it back towards Marcus Fraser, he curls one down the line, straight at Newell, his header, and Ryan Strain picks up possession again for St Mirren, tries to work it down the line, but Hibs are working hard here at uh, protecting what they have at the moment and making life difficult for St Mirren as they look to come back at Hibs here. Fraser, Gogic from the throw-in and back again, and into the middle for Taylor, inside the centre circle. And he uh, flights a ball out wide for Tanzer to nod it down, looking to link up with Greg Kilty on that side. And the ball is out for a, a St Mirren throw-in. Not too many empty seats to be had inside here. It's a well-filled ground. A St Mirren look to come back from a goal down. Cross ball into the box. And uh, a decent flick header away by Jordan Abita. At the back post, getting the better of McMenamin. Out for a throw in and strain to take this for St. Minor, about 15 yards from the flag, the corner flag. Back to him from O'Hara, combining. O'Hara bursting his way to the byline, clips the ball in at the near post, and the St. Minor fans reckon he was caught late by Newell as he got that cross in. Well, it looked like a free kick, although, say, Mark O'Hara wasn't complaining too much. Um, nice little turn from O'Hara in a tight area, got in front of Joe Newell, he got the cross away, but yeah, it looked from this angle like Joe Newell had slid on him a little bit late. Sports Sound live from Paisley, St Mirren nil, Hibs won, and the best part of 19 minutes gone, Levitt in possession, and he finds a good pass 
to release Whitaker down the right. He plays it for Yuan, right on the touchline. The goal scorer, Campbell, trying to switch it across, holding up his hand of acknowledgement because it wasn't a great pass. Hibs have it again, though, with Newell, who threads it through just a little bit too much on it. Played it with the outside of the left foot down the inside right channel. Wasn't a bad idea at all, sliding off his line to collect was Hemming. It's uh, very, very close to being a perfect ball through, and Venti would have been getting a strike away, but just the last couple of moments there, you see the difference where... Josh Campbell in the middle of the park. He's won a ball back in the middle, getting a turnover. I know he gave away the, the cross field ball that he attempted to play, but there's just more bodies in the middle of the park for Hibs rather than two out and out strikers who it almost at times haven't watched Hibs. I know that Josh Campbell's standing up there just now, but that, what you're seeing just now in terms of a front four, is what you see a lot of the time. Four guys standing in a flat line across the back line, which becomes quite easy to defend against as well, and it becomes an even bigger gap in the middle of the park for those two guys to, to try and fill because they're there isolated and all alone whereas Josh Campbell making these runs from a little bit deeper and giving a little bit more of a um, presence in the middle of the park it, for me it certainly gives a better balance to the hip side Simeon lose it cheaply again Jair Tavares to Newell he squares it for Eli Yuan setting himself up for the left foot shot great block Richard Taylor flung himself in the way of what looked like a goal bound effort that from Yuan Hibs are looking to add to their one goal advantage already Slack again from St Mirren though two opportunities to clear the ball they were closed down Eventually it comes to Yuan, who does well to make space at the edge of the box, cutting from his right foot onto his left foot. And you're right, Robert, it was a fantastic block from Richard Taylor. He was flying out to block the shot. It did look like it was going on target. They have a spring in their step here, Hibbs, but uh, Whitaker's given it away and the ball is uh, worked through towards McMenamin, who rolls it back inside for O'Hara to have a shot at goal. He was trying to side-foot it, uh, and it was a good block defensively from Hibbs to keep him out. McMenamin looked well offside to me. Angled ball from Jair Tavares for Dylan Venter, right side of the box. Holds it up at the byline and tries to fire that in from a surely impossible angle. I mean, the ball over the top was fantastic. Richard Taylor was just ambling onto it. I don't think he thought it was going to go uh, stay in play. Venta gets to it, and it was kind of in Baston type angles. If he'd got that on target, it would have been an incredible effort, as it was. Probably. Well, he is the right nationality, I suppose, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> just uh, you know, just kind of went past the the side net, and he certainly caught it sweetly enough. But Sitburn, this is as poor as I've seen Sitburn certainly in Paisley so far this season. If you were a betting person, you might be having a little wager on Hibs getting the next goal in the game, Michael. It looks that way at the moment, doesn't it, rather than St Mirren squaring this up? Yeah, at the moment it does. It's been a bright uh, opening 20 minutes or so from Hibs, um, and that was another good uh, good bit of play. Breaking quickly on St Mirren, and, and uncharacteristically and surprisingly, St Mirren have had some gaps this time it's Hibbs who give the ball away pretty cheaply. It was Dylan Levitt who was caught on the ball. St Mirren have it and they look to create something. There's been very little for them so far in the attacking third. Working it around at the moment. McMenamin, right-hand side, curls one in. Kilty gets himself onto it, whips it into the middle, comes off. Joe Newell made a good block as the ball was coming in and he stabs it back in the direction of his goalkeeper. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the best cross in in the world, but Greg Kelty did well to get a hold of it, turned sharply, but then he's kind of losing his balance as he tries to cross it in. And when he does, it really doesn't have any pace on it. It was easily enough for uh, Joe Neal to get across and cut it out. That was maybe the first time Hibs have given it away in the game so far. It's all been pretty neat and tidy from them. Just maybe a little bit over-ambitious that time from, from Levitt, but he's been a... He's been a key player in the game, just working the ball around. He's technically very good, he really is. You know, on the ball, he can see passes, he sees the whole picture. I think uh, in games, possibly, when they're up against a three and he's really having to work defensively, I don't think that's quite his strongest suit. But when he's on the ball and he's afforded space and time, he can see things. Headed away from Gogic at the back for St Mirren, then gets it back from O'Hara, the St Mirren captain, Taylor to Tanzer and 
Hibbs hunting the ball down or trying to at the moment, pressing, making life difficult for St Mirren as they try to play it away and keep the ball. Free kick given for a challenge in O'Hara in the midfield. And we're past the midway point in the first half, 24 minutes gone, BBC Radio Scotland. And uh, St Mirren nil, Hibbs one. Josh Campbell making the difference after a clearing Gogic error. It's he on the ball at the moment, the Cypriot international with a long diagonal, which is right down the throat of Obita, and he can head that away. Throw in just underneath us, and it's taken by McMenamin to Fraser. Forward from uh, O'Hara, stabbed forward, really. Not played with any great conviction. Here he comes again, the captain, down the line. Conor McMenamin, the Northern Ireland international, onto the left foot, in swinging, headed away by Fish. A little uh, collision involving Newell, but I don't think anyone was going to be looking for a penalty from sure, that. Sure. Well, there, there were some optimis <laughs> optimistic <laughs> noises around us. It sounded like there was a couple of thousand submitted fans who were cheering for that. Yeah. On the halfway line, Taylor trying to work it out wide. I think the pass was intended for Tanzer. Finally finds him close to the corner of line. Good ball in, punched away by Marshall, under pressure. And uh, then the looping header back into the box is grabbed by the goalkeeper. Great play again by Tanzer. Great ball. It really, really was. In a very dangerous area. Rocky Bashiri's gone down as well. Just a coming together with Bashiri, Mal uh, Mandron and... Um, and David Marshall, it was in such a, a, a difficult area for anybody to really deal with. But um, good play from St Mirren. Unfortunately for them, it didn't come to anything. No. So yeah. European, uh, sorry, I was just going to say a European double bill tomorrow night, Tom Owen, uh, Sports Sound, of course. Uh, from Greece to Govan it is tomorrow night, isn't it? Pauk <laughs> against Aberdeen firstly, uh, and then Rangers against Sparta Prague. Yeah, it'll be a difficult game, you would imagine, uh, for Aberdeen over there. We saw just uh, how difficult it was for Hearts when they went out to that stadium. The atmosphere is very hostile, to say the least. For Rangers against Sparta tomorrow night, the first half I was over in Sparta and they completely dominated, really should have scored, but they didn't manage to do that. And Prague. as the Graham, what, what is, Sparta, is, is Sparta near Prague, yeah? Just the, oh, was that no, you just, no, you said when, when I was over in Sparta. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, is it not? Yeah, he's, he's getting confused. Is that like Slavia? He's getting confused with Greece. Thank you are just think so just... pamickety, aren't you? <laughs> sitting there. I think, it's, uh, I think it's sitting beside him, Tomo. The, 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 it's quite infectious. Uh, honestly. Uh, anyway, uh, Rangers grew into the game and did well to get the result. I think that if, uh, if they start the game, like they finish the game over in Prague, then uh, they've got a good chance of winning at Ibrox tomorrow night. Back underway in Paisley, 27 minutes gone, St Mirren nil, Hibs 1. Can Stephen Robinson's team come back at Hibs? Well, it's Hibs who have a chance to break here now with Jair Tavares right in the middle of the pitch, keeping possession, just waiting for the moment, not giving it away, and he does find the answer Whitaker. Yeah, but you wait so long that St Mirren all get back. I mean, yeah. he's, got, he's got great pace. I, I just felt as if... He could have been breaking it at a bit more speed and him and Vente could have been able to do something. Now, granted, he kept possession and Hibs are still down in St Mirren's uh, third, but still, I keep going back to this. St Mirren seldom gift opposition you know, chances. They've done that tonight and there's gaps still in that back line, but I can't imagine that happening for 90 minutes. I think you need to grasp those opportunities when they present themselves. Just seen Tanzer giving it away, losing the ball, letting it run out of play on the far side. And it's maybe symptomatic of this St Mirren performance so far, Tomo, just uh, stuttering at the moment. Yeah, it's been unusually sluggish um, in, in terms of St Mirren um, pressing teams and making things difficult for them. I feel as though Hibernian have been afforded too much time on the ball to make their passes um, possibly too big a gap between the defence and the midfield as well, as well this, is a, this is a typical thing for Hibs where they've got their back four and then they've got the two midfielders who drop really deep looking for the ball and then there's like a 20 yard gap between them and what is effectively a front four now I've been making a lot about the fact that Josh Campbell's been playing tonight but there and on a couple of occasions he's played
playing like an out-and-out -out striker. It's a flat line at the top end of the park. You need to get a bit of depth in your team. You need to have players that are, you know, not all standing in a line because that's easy to defend against. And it's very difficult if you're a midfielder to pick the ball up and you've got no day making angles for you. Ryan Strain down the right-hand side, and again, you can hear the groans from the St Mirren fans as he looked to find a little bit of room for a cross, couldn't find it, couldn't get away from Mobita, and it was uh, hassled out of play by Hibbs. Just need to be patient, St Mirren, and get themselves back in the groove. But so far, Hibbs worthy of their 1-0 lead. A strain takes the throw, gets it back, cross into the box, just a little bit of hesitation before Newell cleared, thumping the ball into the main stand here. Another throw in coming, St Mirren's way, almost at the half hour mark. Josh Campbell's goal, the only one. Strain's throw finds Taylor, and back on halfway is Gogic. Just a little shimmy to get him away from Campbell. Plays it right side. Back with Marcus Fraser. Working it along the halfway line. Taylor looks to get Tanzer going down that left-hand side. The wing-back collects and rolls it inside. Back again for Tanzer. Got such a good delivery. Right-footed this time, not so strong as on the left. And that allowed Fish to clear pretty easily. Enjoying a little bit of concerted possession at the moment of the ball at least St Mirren as they try to build a better performance wide it goes again left hand side Tanzer in comes the cross ball fended away by Obita Taylor onto it down goes the big centre back under Newell's challenge Stephen McLean not impressed no free kick to the byline for St Mirren on the left hand side clumsy unnecessary challenge into the back and uh, that will be a free kick on the byline. It was needless. Oh, exactly. It was. Uh, John Newell was down on the halfway line. I don't know whether he felt like he'd been filled, but then he, he, he springs back up. He got back in to make the initial challenge. That, uh, you know, from this angle, you're thinking as he was running in, you see free kicks given, but he managed to win the ball, and then he goes running into a tackle where the St Mirren players running towards the corner flag. And he just barges them in the back, absolutely needless. And you know St Mirren have got very good delivery. This is the last thing you need to be doing is giving them a chance to throw it into the box. So free kick, almost on the byline. Whipped in towards the back post, just a little bit. Too much elevation on it. And it skims off Tanzer's head and behind for the goal kick. Yeah, it was Ryan Strain with the delivery. You could see what he was doing. He was looking for Tanzer at that back post area. Just wee bit too much on it, Tanzer at full stretch managing to get his head to it but could only really flick it on and goes out for a bye kick for David Marshall to take Joe Newell will be relieved that nothing came of that free kick because it was very avoidable from a hips point of view, Dylan Levitt switches the ball across from right to left and Obita with room to run into down the left hand side, wide of him is Jair Tavares, he jinks in field, what can he do from here? Running along the edge of the box, squares it for Eli Yuan. shooting chance, it's blocked, but it breaks back out, Whitaker with the angle shot, saved by Hemming, the bodies are tumbling at the moment, inside the penalty box, Yuan tries again, another save from the goalkeeper, it's a real scramble to get it clear, Hibs have it back and they can keep the pressure on here. Obita in the middle of the pitch, plays it to Levitt, Levitt tries to thread it through. Finally, Taylor gets it away from the danger zone, but Hibbs immediately work it back out wide for Yuan. His pass intercepted by Taylor, St Mirren looked to get it away, and that is some escape with the shots raining in on the St Mirren goal. Stephen Robinson is not a happy man, is he? He really isn't. Uh, I mean, honestly, that was a stramash to end all stramashes. With three or four shots blocked, people, a penalty claim, people flying everywhere, bodies flying everywhere. And you chuckling down the mic. Yeah, I mean, it, you could only laugh at that. It was absolutely comical. A couple of good saves from Zach Hemming as well. Yeah, I think there was one in there. I mean, it was hard to see who the ball was hitting off of at one stage. But yeah. It was like Skittles, but I mean, Stephen Robinson, very unhappy with how his team are performing. Hibbs giving it everything to stretch their advantage 
in the game and maybe unlucky not to be further in front. Just the 1-0 lead so far, courtesy of Josh Campbell. But they couldn't have tried any harder there to go further in front, really banging on the door at the moment towards getting a second goal. They've been good, Hibs. Yep. Jair Tavares to Campbell, whipped in, Eli Yuan with the left foot shot, and you were just waiting for that to be nestling in the bottom corner, maybe it should have been, it's gone wide. Another really good move from Hibbs, doubling up down the left-hand side, Lobita and Tavares getting it eventually down the line, whipping the ball across, and as you were saying there, you're just waiting for the, the net to bulge once it got to in the path of Eli Yuhan whipping it across the, the face of the goal and eventually obviously missing the, the far corner but as he struck that you're thinking the goalkeeper him he's got no chance loads of pace on it unfortunately for Hibs it goes past the post and St Mirren managed to stay in the game here as they approach the final 10 minutes of the half which is no doubt for Nick Montgomery is exactly what he would have been looking for in terms of a response to the disappointment of the weekend coming to a difficult venue here in Paisley. They've, uh, they've performed very well and you know, you've got to, as uncharacteristic and as poor as St Mirren have been, I think you've got to put some of that down to the way that Hibs have played. They've been, they've been quick, they've been incisive and uh, yes, their goals come from a mistake, but they've been creating more chances as this half has worn on. I think it's great to see the re-emergence of Jair Tavares, who was so far out of the reckoning as far as first-team football I was concerned. Say, I, wouldn't even, well, I, wouldn't even, I was going to say, I wouldn't even see it as a re-emergence, it's just an emergence. Yeah, well, came. yeah but, it, but what I mean is he's been here for a while. Yeah, he came, <laughs> he came here and he never got a sniff yeah, at all. Yeah, but he's actually become a really big part of what Hibs do now. Um, and he's uh, there's something elusive about him when he's on the ball. Yeah, there is. There's no doubt about it. And he's got pace. He's direct. He puts defenders under pressure in one v one situations. I mean, you get pace like that on the left, and Eli Yuan on the right. It's going to cause defences problems no matter what. And so far, that's been the case. I think he's had more of the ball than Yuan has over on the right. Although when he's been crossing it in, Yuan's been doing well to get in at the back post and into the edge of the box to pick up scraps. Hibs will be hoping they don't regret missing opportunities because they have really dominated this first half in terms of goal-scoring chances. Just the one taken so far, and uh, you would be working on the basis that St Mirren are going to be better second half than they've been first. He's like to think so. I think it could be a bit of a team talk from Stephen Robinson at half-time. This is not what he thinks his team should be playing like or what he expects them to play like. O'Hara to strain. But uh, well, there's Jair Tavares working really hard. Apart from when he's on the ball, he's working hard when he's off the ball as well. He's really putting in a shift for Nick Montgomery here down the left-hand side, supporting Bobita when the left-back is under pressure and uh, really doing the, the full deal. Hips a goal ahead as the ball is worked by St Mirren to strain, who curls one towards the edge of the box, looking for Mikael Mandron who's been uh, chasing shadows for much of this first half. Rocky Bashiri hooks the ball out of play, and it's a St Mirren throw in right-hand side with 37 and a half minutes on the clock. Throw in goes to O'Hara, back to Strain. Fraser to Gogic, angled forward and headed away by Eli Yuan. He getting back on the right-hand side to do a shift as well for Hibbs. Now Taylor, right in the middle of the pitch for Marcus Fraser. Down the line it goes for straight. Fraser again curls a cross into the box, headed away by Rocky Bushiri. Not the most convincing clearing header you've ever seen, but it does find its way out for a throw-in. Can't see it, Mirren get this game levelled up before half-time. In comes a cross ball from Fraser, headed away by Fish, bouncing towards the left side of the box, hooked back in, and uh, the header from Mikhail Mandron, who's coming away from goal to try and force something of a save out of David Marshall, but it's missed the target. Yeah, it's virtually impossible for him to score from that angle. Um, I think Tanzer does well to hook it back into an area, but 
it's behind everybody in Mandron's having to kind of arch every sinew in his body to try and get the header and was looting a metre over David Marshall's bar just about as close as St Mirren have come really from open play it's been a quiet half for David Marshall apart from when he was clattered into by Alec Gogic the Premiership table could look a whole lot happier for Hibs by the time we're finished tonight if uh, the story remains the same plenty of football though to be played St Mirren well capable of coming back at them but it's been a certainly a strong first half showing from Nick Montgomery's team and they could go up uh, a few places in the league if they can get all three points here uh, they certainly want to win it's been a while on the ball Levitt given away intercepted by Gogic O'Hara in the middle to strain and uh, Fraser appears alongside to help him out Looking forward, not seeing too much strain. Square it goes. Boyd Munts plays a pass to the byline for uh, Tanzer. Curled it in. It was curling out towards the edge of the area, which made life difficult for Mandron. Hibs were comfortable in getting that clear. It's a good ball over the top from Boyd Munts. Somebody I really like. Any time I've watched him, I think he's he's got really good ability. He dropped that ball pinpoint over the top for Tanza. Another cross ball in from Tanzer, headed away at the near post. The follow-up shot is uh, well off target from Boyd Mance. Certainly getting enough crosses in St Mirren. I mean, as much as they haven't played well in this opening half, they must have had from opening play, open play, um, seven, eight decent uh, balls into the box. Just nobody getting on the end of them. That one was cleared, comes to the edge of the box. Boyd Mance takes a touch and... So again, 25 yards out. He catches it OK, but it was always rising from the minute it left his foot harmlessly over David Marshall's bat. Just about four minutes left of the first half in Paisley. BBC Radio Scotland, St Mirren, Neil Hibbs won, and just a momentary lapse in concentration from Abita. Let's the ball drift out for a St Mirren throw-in. Fraser prods it inside towards O'Hara and uh, Boyd Munts beginning to have more of an influence in the game. Tanzer's cross ball in, and uh, it just flashed towards Greg Kilty, and he couldn't really get control of it, and the ball goes uh, behind for a goal kick. I think yeah. Simeon will happily get themselves regrouped at half-time and, and uh, come up with something a bit better after the interval, Tomo. Yeah, I mean, I think Scott Tanzel's had a decent amount of the ball down the left-hand side. That was another good pick-out from Boyd Munz. And this time, the cross wasn't as good. Greg Kilty trying to get something on it and knocking it out for a goal kick. But, yeah. Ooh. Whoa! Mistake by Fish. Mandron was almost in. And uh, good work by Newell to uh, get the central defender out of jail there. It was a really clumsy touch. And suddenly, Mandron, who's been starved of anything... Uh, Almost at a half chance of getting a crack at goal. He just panicked. Joe Newell's played the ball. You know, it's in a tight area. They're, they're clearly, it's what they're looking to do is to play out. I just felt that when that ball got played to Will Fish, he was getting pressure applied on him, and he just panicked and wanted to drive into the inside channel, and his first touch was all over the shop. Rather than, for me, taking the touch and staying opening up down the line Jordan Obita chesting down across there, finally ending up and giving it away, he was trying to chest it back to David Marshall there but it was a mix up, no communication between left back and, and goalkeeper and almost coughed up an opportunity there for St Mirren who spirits are being lifted a little as half time beckons, another cross ball in from Tanzer, missed completely by Fish, fired in on goal, knocked off the line by Obita and uh, Suddenly, things looking a whole lot brighter for St Mirren. Gogic yeah. uh, fires one forward, but uh, doesn't find strain, and that is going to slip out of play close to the corner flag. These last five minutes have been St Mirren's best spell in the opening half, without a shadow of a doubt, and most of it, in fact, all of it coming down the left-hand side. Another great ball in by Tans, and more confusion in the box. It falls, the St Mirren player drives it towards goal, but Hibs have got bodies back that manage to clear it, but, yeah, without a doubt, St Mirren applying more pressure. Albeit a wee bit too little, too late in terms of this half. 
It's not as if it's a blustery night, is it? No, it's not. I, I just I don't know how Will Fish missed the ball. Yeah. You know, the cross came in, he jumped up, and it was as if he completely misjudged it. Missed it by a mile. Yeah. Here goes Tanzer again. Just a little change of pace. Gets a great ball in back post. Well, it was screaming for a finishing touch. Three St Mirren players coming in in that back post area. None of them could get the crucial touch. Well, there's another one. You know, they're really applying the pressure just before half time here. And as Tomo said, it's all coming down the left with Tanzer. He's whipping balls in for fun. And they're getting closer and closer to getting somebody on the end of it. They're into some really dangerous areas. That was another one, but the three players around the back just not able to get anything on target. Hibs have looked pretty calm and confident for a lot of this first half. Not so in the last few minutes, looking distinctly ruffled at the back at the moment. Hibs and half-time might come at a good time for them as they protect this 1-0 advantage. Uh, Simeon are definitely getting a lift at the moment and uh, the whistle might go at the wrong time for them as Yuan goes forward. Uh, he was fouled. Steve McLean let it go for a moment, but he's going to bring it back for the free kick as we find out there are two minutes to be added to the first 45. 1-0 Hibs and Paisley. Well, it's taken them too long to find their groove in the game. Really slow start from them. And then obviously the big mistake from Gogic. But as the half's grown on, certainly in the last 10 minutes, it have looked more threatening all down that left-hand side. Just nobody managing to get on the end of it. Long ball up to Mandron doesn't stick for St Mirren's number nine. Again, looking a bit twitchy is Will Fish at the back for Hibbs. The ball is with him again. And it goes further back to David Marshall. Inside stoppage time we are in Paisley. Rocky Bashiri plays it forward and Jair Tavares looks to keep it. He was short with a pass to Dylan Levitt. Kilty looking for the chance to get a shot in on goal. It was uh, blocked. Boyd Munts to Tanzer again down that left side. He just lost his footing that time. Scott Tanzer and the ball goes out on the far side. And I think uh, Hibbs will be pretty happy to hear that half-time whistle coming up in a matter of seconds. Because uh, the home team are coming back at them with a vengeance here after a disappointing showing by their high standards. But every indication that in the second half they will be much more competitive. Ryan Strain plays it forward for uh, McMenamin. Back it goes to Gogic. Alongside him, Taylor. Drifting across the pitch, Richard Taylor. And the ball is played wide. Again on this right side, two strain. Curling ball down the line, headed away by Jordan Abita and out. And uh, a look at the watch and a blast of the whistle from Stephen McLean. And that is half time here in Paisley. And Hibbs lead by a goal to nil halfway through as they look to bounce back from Hamden. Disappointment at the weekend, but they've been uh, pretty impressive here in the main in the first 45, looking pretty confident and uh, going in front, cashing in on a mistake from Alex Gogic. You don't see too many of those from the Cypriot International, but when Jordan Abita played a pretty poor pass straight at the St Mirren defender, he allowed it to slip under his boot. Dylan Venter set up. Josh Campbell returning to the Hibs starting lineup, and he took the chance very well, side footing past Zach Hemming for what has proved to be the only goal of the first half. Hibs have, could have gone further in front. There was a left foot effort from Ellie Yuan, which flashed wide. There was a, a glorious scramble inside the St Mirren box at one stage when the shots were raining in on goals. Couple of saves from Hemming, couple of good blocks as well. Hibs were denied, and it was really only in the last five minutes of the first half that we saw St Mirren anything like the standards they've been setting this season. They'll look to pick up the second half where they left off in the first as they try to sort out this one-goal deficit. Half-time in Paisley, St Mirren nil, Hibs 1. 
on digital radio, online at BBC Sport Scotland, or play BBC Radio Scotland Extra on your smart speaker or BBC Sounds. This is Sport Sound. Scottish football lives here. What a goal! New this autumn on BBC iPlayer. Are you even listening? Hmm? This is important. Feel the heat in Boiling Point. Go out there and smash it. Calm down! No, I'm not going to calm down. I've had enough. Catch up with old friends in Ghosts. Yes! Well done, Robin. You just wooed 170-year-old woman. Oh, next goes, mate. And make room for sort your life out. Shall we see what we're dealing with? The mouse. Woo! How am I expected to fight in these conditions? <laughs> Watch on BBC iPlayer. So half time here in Paisley, St Mirren nil, Hibs won. Josh Campbell on 12 minutes with a really cool finish into the bottom corner. So unlike St Mirren in this first half, really not at it. Stephen Thompson, you can see the frustrations of the manager down there below. They got better as the half wore on. Some great delivery from Tans on the left hand side, but no end product. No, I mean, the amount of crosses he got in in the last 10 minutes is remarkable in itself, but it's all been down that left-hand side. They've not really managed to get McMenamin and strain down this right-hand side. I can't think of only maybe one delivery from the right-hand side. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought they started awfully poorly, awfully sluggishly. Hibs, you have to give credit to. You know, we talked before the game about how they were going to react to the disappointment uh, of the weekend in the cup tie and they started really brightly I think St Mern sat off them a wee bit too much allowed them too much time on the ball they were dictating play without really causing too many problems and then of course you know the, the Gogic mistake uncharacteristic yes but not a mistake that you should be making um, far far too slack and it was well finished by Campbell you have to say after that I feel as though St Mern again were kind of struggling to make inroads in the game Hibernian had a couple of half chances. They had, as Rob's called it, that stramage. So um, it took St Mirren a good 35 minutes to wake up, if you like. Uh, and when they did, they looked the better side. But, you know, they're already a goal down at this stage. Um, I'm pretty sure that Stephen Robinson in the St Mirren changing room will be demanding that they start the second half in the same manner that they finished the first. But even then, I can't think of anything that's troubled David Marshall too much. Yes, they're getting good deliveries in, but nothing on the end of it. No, Amanda on has offered very little up top. Michael, you spoke before the game about the importance of Josh Campbell, a really nice finish from him. Talk to us about the shape of this hip side tonight. Why is it working in the first half? I think they've just played particularly well. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I don't think that it's, it's massively different from the way they've played uh, before with two out-and-out strikers because Josh Campbell's played very, very high for most of it but on occasions he has been back in the midfield and and uh, and helped out with just being an extra body in there but um, I, I think overall performance from Hibs has been very good they've kept the ball well they've worked into some dangerous uh, some dangerous areas but um, no in, in terms of Josh Campbell he is naturally a midfielder who's going to you know move forward from midfield to getting support of the, the striker rather than the reverse of a striker who's trying to drop back in and help out. But having said all that, for the vast majority of the game, he has played almost like an out-and-out -out striker up in the, the final line with uh, with Dylan Vente and uh, the, the two white boys is in there as well. I'm still just trying to come to terms with... Uh, with <laughs> Explain what's happening. No, Explain no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not I'm On digital radio, online at BBC Sport Scotland, or play BBC Radio Scotland Extra on your smart speaker or BBC Sounds. This is Sport Sound. Scottish football lives here. What a goal! New this autumn on BBC iPlayer. Are you even listening? Hmm? This is important. Feel the heat in boiling point. Go out there and smash it. Calm down! No, I'm not going to calm down. I've had enough. Catch up with old friends in Ghosts. Yes! Well done, Robin. You just wooed 170-year-old woman. Oh, next goes, mate. And make room for sort your life out. Shall we see what we're dealing with? The mouse. Woo! How am I expected to fight in these conditions? Watch on BBC iPlayer. Apologies for losing you there. I should explain what happened. A couple of youngsters come up to get some strips signed by Stephen Thompson there, and one of them 
kick the line down below us here and put us off air, Michael. <laughs> just when you're in the middle of saying something really interesting. Well, it was doing, all, us, <laughs> doing, us, doing us all a favour. <laughs> <laughs> right, I tell you, let's hear something interesting now. Our pitch out of Porter, okay. Brian McLaughlin, has been joined by the St Mirren Chief Executive, Keith Lasley. I have to say, it's going to be Keith that's talking about some interesting topics. Yeah, Keith, first of all, what do you make of that 45 minutes? Your team didn't turn up for 40 of those, did they? Yeah, I think uh, sluggish. I think um, it's not like us. I've got to say that. I think at home here we've been we've been decent, uh, you know, since the start of the season. But listen, half time, still plenty of time to go. And I think, as you say, that last five minutes, it's you know, with a bit more energy, a bit more threat in that final third. So let's you know, hopefully we can keep that going. It's pretty evident, you know, the improvements on the pitch. But tell us about what's happening outside of the pitch and behind the scenes here at St Mirren because there've been improvements there as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's part of my job. My job I've been in for 18 months now, and obviously a huge part of it's the football and trying to provide a, you know the best team that we can on the pitch. But you know, as fan-owned football club, we've we've got a big part to play in the, the community. Uh, you know, we launched a club strategy. Uh, you know, last couple of weeks, and we think it's you know we we've got a part to play in this community. You know, be that through a schools program, be that you know outreach work into the community, different charities, etc. Uh, and you know we, we are really just the strategy document is there to try and join all of that up the football side of it and the community side of it and hopefully you know moving forward it can really magnify and help us grow at the, you know the stuff that we are doing it's fan owned but not fan run you yourself and the board run the club but the, the fact that the fans are involved in the community as well does that what does how does that help you on a day-to-day -day basis try to get more people involved in what's happening in some month? yeah well, it's, it's, it's how we grow right you know we we need to connect into that community you know to get our next generation seen a supporter as well into the stadium and provide a match to experience it's a family welcoming uh, that, that people want to come to and that's why we are as I say you know so involved with local primary schools etc and uh, you know our community work as I, as, as I said but you know it's who we are you know I think it's really defining who we are on the pitch and who we are off the pitch and having a clear identity uh, in both of those things and I said hopefully that's what the strategy document does a lot of hard work's got to go alongside that we've got to deliver it uh, and make sure we're hitting our kind of benchmarks it's not something that just sits in a shelf uh, but it's not going to be that as long as I'm here we're, you know, I'm going to try and do what I can to, to try and push this club forward on all fronts Women's football has been a huge growth in, that in, the, in the last couple of years now Sunday they're playing here again at the Smyza Stadium how important is that that the, the ladies team also get an opportunity to play here and, and see that game, game grow well it's absolutely vital you know when I say I'm connecting in the community that doesn't mean you know just boys. You know that's girls, that's families, that's everybody. And you know that girls and and women's football is is you know is going through a a, a growth. Uh, you know, phase through the, the whole country, which is fantastic to see at grassroots level. Uh, you know, you see with the, the you know the Premier League and and the, the direction that that's going. And so it's absolutely fantastic. And what we are trying to do is trying to grow our, the women's side of our, our club at a pace that's achievable. But you know, we're doing all that we can to to try and integrate and and as I say, facilitate the growth on that side of the club as well. You know, you've been in the pitch as a player. You've been in the dugout as assistant manager to Stephen Robinson, now your Chief Operations Officer here at St Mirren, and you're Stephen Robinson's boss, so who makes yeah. the tea? I know, I might go in and change the formation, I don't know see, but... Uh, no, listen, it's, it's it's a different relationship in terms of our working relationship, but I think it's one that still there's a mutual respect there, and I think that's that's really important. And, you know, it's been good, I've got to say, you know, we know I know when to leave him for five minutes, when he's having a wee moment, and then I know when, you know, I, you know I'm maybe step in and, and say my piece. So, you know, I think the relationship's good, and, and I think, you know, we just kind of get enough good people at this football club and Stephen's doing you know, you know, doing a fantastic job in, in the, the football side of it and you know, hopefully he's here for a, a long time to come. Doing the job you do now though, does it, has it helped you being on the other side, being a player, being in the dugout? Absolutely, you know, you have an, you have a, you know, an understanding uh, particularly on the football side in terms of the academy and what that takes to maybe bring you through your own players, what that pathway looks like first team in terms of recruitment and you know, uh, you know how, how that looks here on a, on a match day and how we're playing and you know, giving bit, little bits of advice but you know, my job's to look after the whole club, and well, it's good on that side of it. You know, I, you know, I make no mistake. I'm still learning certain aspects of it as you do, as you go. Um, but I'm hungry. I'm hungry to learn, and you know, I want to try and do as, as good a job as I can on this side of it because you know that's where I see my future now. Did Stephen ever ask you for advice in the football matter? Uh, you know, really, I don't know. I mean, he walks by here in a minute. He might, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. Well, what like, advice would you give him then at half time <laughs> if, if he was asking you? Uh, oh no, I don't want to go there in case he listens to this. To be honest with you, we'll see how the second half goes. But no, listen, as I said, I'm confident whatever's getting said in there will be the right thing. And, uh, you know, let's see how this second half goes. You must be really pleased, though. I mean, we look at you tonight, a big crowd, a lot of kids here tonight. It was the reason a couple of, we went off air was a couple of kids pulled out the plug. <laughs> we were 
but they were trying to get us an autograph from Stephen Thompson. Um, but that must please you as well when you see so many kids here tonight. Yeah, it's the future of this club, Brian. It's as simple as that. You know, we've got a fantastically loyal fan base, uh, and we want to look after them uh, absolutely. But we also want to nurture that next generation, and uh, and that's what we're trying to do. You know, uh, it will not be easy. It will be ups and downs along the way. Um, but you know that's what we're trying to do, and I think as long as everybody internally knows that, and you know we, we let people know what we're trying to do, hopefully that gives us the best chance of achieving that. Well, finally, then um, you maintain where you are in the moment in the league. You're going to be in Europe next year. You're already looking at schedules and trying to find planes to go to far, far off places. Yeah, well, I once sang in a pitch at Malibu, I think, a few, long time ago, if you remember. So I might be back on there with a microphone if you reach Europe, that's for sure. But listen, in all seriousness, we're just absolutely delighted to be, you know, where we are and fighting at that end of the table. You know, it's where we want to be, but we know how hard it is to be there. Um, so, you know, listen, we're not setting any targets. We just keep going game by game and, and, and let's see where that takes us. Thanks, Keith. Well done. Cheers, Brian. Cheers. Yeah, he's done a good job, Keith. Last week, we can speak from experience. Tom, my daughter plays for the women's side. My boy's over there in the North Bank and you, Brilliant. your boy's in the academy. Right. He is, and he's also over there watching the game as well. Yeah, on a freebie academy ticket, I might add. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, Keith is doing a fantastic job. Um, he really is, and it's been great to see. You know, he mentioned the crowd this evening and the crowd all season, and that's been coming off the back of the success of last season. More and more people are coming to watch the games. You know, there was a lot less crowd here when I was playing. You know, given well, that was seven years ago, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the club's in a really good place. What obviously helps all of that is the fact that the first team are doing well and when there's success from the first team on the pitch, then it just everybody kind of buys into it, don't they? But it is a f fantastic community club. They do a lot of work uh, in the community and Keith's a big part of that. The academy's great. You know, my boy Struan's in it and they've got a lot of really, really um, good young players. They've got great staff. Alan McManus heads up the academy. Um, and they've got a lot of really good coaches in there as well. So the future looks very bright for St Mirren, uh, just if they can get their finger out in this second half. <laughs> it's good to see that the club have recovered after Tom got them relegated. <laughs> <laughs> I it's can only see him sitting there with only, a smile on his uh, face. I was, I was wondering what it it's was. It's only taken them seven years, but now they're back. <laughs> yeah, big job for St Mirren to do in the second half here. They are out. We await Hibs, a great first half, and then a really nice finish from Josh Campbell on 12 minutes has them ahead he will see if things change in the second half we'll see if there are any changes to be made by either manager let's then get back to our commentary team this evening Stephen Thompson Michael Stewart and Rob McLean thank you Kenny into the second half we go well we will do shortly when Stephen McLean reappears and uh that Josh Campbell goal, the only one, despite Hibbs' best efforts. But what will encourage St Mirren, of course, is the last few minutes of the first half when they looked uh, a bit more like themselves and suddenly Hibbs looked a bit uncertain at the back. So will that be a trend that continues as the game resumes? Or can uh, Hibbs start the second half the way they started the first, looking pretty calm and confident and controlled? And uh, the balance of the side showing no great harm for the introduction of Campbell. Martin Boyle is on the bench, of course, and we may well see him before tonight is finished. And uh, Keanu Bacchus is uh, back on the on the bench for St Mirren as well, and uh, he could get involved, Tomo, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously a fantastic midfield player. Um, Boyd Munce has been doing well recently. He's been kind of in and out this side. It's Keanu Bacchus, a couple of injury problems but yeah I mean I wouldn't be surprised to see Alex Grieve and Oyasana maybe Bacchus as well coming on in this second half as St Mirren push to try and get back in it St Mirren get it started in the second half and Paisley looking to come back from a goal down, long ball causes problems for Rocky Bashiri. it shouldn't have done and uh, Hibbs had to hurriedly get rid of it Hara to Tanzer, who was all over the first half, and here he goes again, making progress down the left-hand side. Kilty's cross into the box, headed away by Fish, not the best. And uh, on the follow-up, getting a, a good crack in on goal. Marcus Fraser. Was Marcus, um, yeah, I was, I was trying to work out. Is that definitely Marcus Fraser getting the ball down and then yeah. volleying just wide? Yeah, very, very good strike. Likewise, you're thinking, that looks like Marcus Fraser. <laughs> He's joking back to say, yeah, that is him. That was uh, very much nosebleed territory for the St Mirren defender. 
difficulty intercepting a poor pass out from uh, Hibbs and Hibbs look as if they might just be picking up where they left off where they were pretty poor at the end of the first half they've given it away there very cheaply and uh, but for a better cross ball in from the right side Hibbs could have been in a bit of bother they need to settle well that's what they uh, can be guilty of at times is giving away cheap possession and, and unforced errors and there's two in the space of about 20 seconds there now St Mirren are clearly been sent back out of the park with a bit of a rollicking and they need to keep their tempo high and on the front foot that's what they're doing and when Hibs continue to gift possession away then they're going to be asking themselves to uh, <laughs> you know to be punished because St Mirren I can't see them performing like they did in that first half for the majority they are going to be a lot more aggressive Hibs have got to be better in possession and they were better in possession there for the last 30 seconds but it all ended with uh, Joe Newell playing a pretty aimless ball forward and it went behind for a, a goal kick first time Hibs have got themselves forward since the restart a Gogic back pass and a Hemming clearance into the Paisley night sky Mandron tries to get on the end of it looked like a, a high boot from Levitt play goes on Tans are in possession left hand side right on the touchline Jinx his way in field Boyd Munz looks to switch it across to uh, McMenamin on the other side Fraser back to Gogic in the centre circle 1-0 Hibbs Josh Campbell's fourth goal of the campaign Taylor fires it into the feet of Tanzer. Forward it goes from uh, Tanzer, but uh, Whitaker gets his body in the way and escorts the ball behind for a goal kick. He's looked pretty solid, Michael, so far, Rory Whitaker. He has. He's acquitted himself very well at right back. Just good defensive awareness there as well. He wasn't, uh, wasn't afraid to shield that out. You know, he didn't panic as if he was trying to clear his lines he just getting his body in and for you know for somebody as young as that sometimes you would expect them to shy away from the the physicality but he certainly didn't and another 16 year old on the bench for him's in josh landers here come the easter road team with uh, newell getting the ball back from ewan and then dinking one forward for Venter to chase mistake by Gogic as it goes back towards his goalkeeper, great save Zach Hemming who bails out Gogic from another big blunder again it was Josh Campbell nipping in on a faulty back pass and the goalkeeper did so well to dive down and get his glove to it what is he doing? I mean it's incredible the one of the first his motorbike half, again. no that one wasn't the motorbike, I don't know he's just really short with the pass back, he doesn't even look to check the run of Campbell tries to round Zach Heyman and it's a fantastic save you're thinking if it's a bit wider is he going to go down for a penalty then it's a tap in and Heyman was down really quickly to thwart him but another horrendous mistake there from Gogic corner kicks in Mirren left hand side Ryan Strain whips it in it was a really good delivery and it took a bit of defending I think it was Rocky Bushiri who uh, threw himself down there not sure if a free kick has been given. It was certainly a great delivery in. Well, St Mirren have started the, the second half much more aggressively than the, than the first, but all of that would have been undone very quickly had uh, Josh Campbell rounded Hemming and put the ball in the back of the net. I just Alex Gogic was under a little bit of pressure. He wasn't able to get enough on the ball back to the goalkeeper. A little bit of panic setting in as well. And uh, the goalkeepers bailed him out. It's a, it's a great double save, isn't it? Because he gets a he gets a glove to it to stop stops Campbell getting round him, and then he dives on the loose ball. Uh, meantime, there's a VAR check going on on the back of that uh, possible penalty scramble on the end of the the strain corner kick. So it was difficult to see. I mean, the ball comes in. There's about three bodies fall to the ground. We're obviously kind of a good 50, 60 yards away from it, so it was hard to see. 
exactly what happened. Stephen McLean taking his time, holding his ear. I think, Brian, we're talking about something off the ball, are we? Yeah, it wasn't at the near post. I think there was possibly something at the back post. Jordan Obita just watching. Oh, there's, there's, I'm just having a look at a replay now. For me, that's a definite penalty. Oh, he's coming at the monitor. Yeah, well, I think you're right, Brian, because Stephen McLean's going to have a look here, and uh, that generally means that the decision is going to be turned around. Yeah, I think Richard Taylor's just said to him there that his shirt was being pulled, so I can only presume Mobita was pulling Richard Taylor's shirt in the well, box. And... What an opportunity this could be for St Mirren to level things up within a matter of minutes at the start of the second half. Brian, you've had a good look now. Yeah, it was certainly, Jordan Obita has certainly grabbed the, the shirt of Taylor. It's at the back post, it's nowhere near the front post. Um, and yeah, I, I think Steve McLean will, will point to the spot when he looks at this. Completely off the ball. See, the, the, the thing is here, obviously, we don't have any... This is a little bit different for us. We have no monitors. So we're almost a little bit like the punters and the fans. Yeah. You have no idea what's going on. We know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a good uh, Well, there's the sign. There's the, there's the gesture from the referee which says penalty kick. St Mirren and the chance to make this 1-1. One, one. Well, I say it's not a good experience, obviously, for the St Mirren fans. They're absolutely delighted. But in general, when you don't know what's going on... <laughs> It's, there's an element of just completely in the dark. Yellow card for uh, Jordan Obita as well. And it's going to be Mark O'Hara, the St Mirren captain, who will take this. And he, well, he's got a pretty good record. I hate, I'm, not, I'm not wanting to jinx him, Tomo, but he's got a pretty good record, hasn't he, from the spot? Yeah, he does. He does. And this is where VAR works, because nobody would have any idea, whether it's the linesman, the referee, that that was a penalty kick. You've not seen it, so how do you know? <laughs> they have. He can tell from 100 yards away. <laughs> this could be a big turning point on the night in Paisley. It's Mark O'Hara from the penalty spot. And he scores brilliantly. Goalkeeper David Marshall flung himself to his left. The ball was fired down the other side. And uh, the Paisley team have levelled this up, it's Marco Hara's fourth goal of the season, it's 1-1. Yeah, it's a really good penalty, very composed, he shapes as though he's going to go to David Marshall's left, Marsh buys the, the dummy, if you like, and then just closes his foot over it and reverses it, the opposite side from David Marshall, and St Mirren have started this second half by far and away the better side, putting the Birmingham under pressure, playing at a tempo, the Paisley crowd, you can hear behind you, have been used to seeing here um, in all of the home games so you'd imagine the momentum is now with St Mary they did what we were talking about they uh, opened up second half the way they'd closed first half and they've got their reward VAR picking up that shirt tag by Jordan Abita who was booked on Richard Taylor and uh, there was really never much doubt about the penalty conversion from the St Mirren skipper. It's 1-1. Looks, he looks so confident when he steps up to take yeah. penalty kicks. It's a really nice finish. But uh, there's a minute where the game's just turned on its head because Josh Campbell could have been rounding Zach Hemming and making it 2-0 up the other end. Penalty kick and now 1-1 with St Mirren well and truly in the ascendancy. Just a mistake, a misplaced pass as St Mirren worked the ball down the left-hand side. Kilty played the ball out off Tanzer. It was an awkward pass behind the wing-back. But St Mirren are considerably lifted last few minutes, first half, and then getting the penalty equaliser early second half. And this is a test of character now for Hibbs, who've uh, had a lot of possession and a lot of control in the first half. Chances too, in addition to the Josh Campbell goal. Now they find themselves having to do it all over again. We're 10 minutes into the second half in Paisley and Josh Campbell's goal cancelled out by the Mark O'Hara penalty for each of them. Number four, number four goal of the season. And uh, here comes St Mirren again. The ball is threaded by Boyd Munts down the left-hand side. Kilty looking lively. O'Hara looked to play it out wide for Tanzer. Referee Stephen McLean in the way. Got there eventually, whipped into the box. St Mirren threatening again. 
The ball clipped towards the, the back it. post area, and it was beyond Mandron bouncing behind for the goal kick. Yeah, it just comes to Mark Ahara after the kind of poor clearance at the edge of the box. All right, the angle's not great, but he took a touch and it really opened up. We're right behind it with our view. Could have curled it, tried for the top corner, but it goes for the stand up to the back post for Mandron. I'm surprised he didn't have a shot. Yeah. Got to say, Eli Yuan's attempt at getting back in and defending was uh, pretty pitiful. You know, he's on the edge of the box. Mark O'Hara didn't do a great deal to get in front of him, and then he just stood and watched him. I don't think defending's a, a strong suit. Free kick for a foul on uh, Jair Tavares. As Hibs look to settle themselves, having lost their lead, a team who haven't won in their last six. And you're laughing at Stephen Robinson. Stephen Robinson, it's honestly. So animated. You could just stick a camera on him for 90 minutes and watch him. It'd be great entertainment, I tell you. Gogic with a back pass, and he puts a, a bit more on it this time. And he gets it through to Hemming. His mistake went unpunished. That, that big moment in the second half as well. The ball down the right for Hibbs. Venter chasing. And his cross is blocked. Good work from Tanza. And the ball ends up going behind for a free kick. A goal kick, I should say, for St Mirren. 57 minutes, 1-1. It just came off the back of Venti's head. Tanza does well to get the block in. And then it looks as though it's going to go out for a corner and just catches the back of Venti's head before crossing the line. Yeah, Nick Montgomery looks static in comparison to his opposite number because he's uh, bouncing around and so animated. Stephen Robinson, and, then, and one of the reasons he's bouncing around is his team are very much back at it now. The gymnast would look pretty static in comparison to Stephen Robinson. Yeah. But just thinking that uh, that Gogic, that second Gogic mistake, which went unpunished, had had Hibs gone two in front, we yeah, might well be talking about a different game. Yeah, it's a long way back if you go. 2-0 down and you know we said it was uncharacteristic of Gogic to have won in the first half very nearly sold the jerseys for a second time the thing is as well you know at the start of the second half when St Mirren ended the first half brightly started the second well if there were to be sucker punch with another mistake like that and yeah. end up 2-0 mentally it's a tough one to come back from St Mirren launched the ball forward Rocky Bashiri gets it back from uh, John Newell. Levitt in the midfield to Eli Yuan in the middle of the pitch with uh, Whitaker on the overlap. Rory Whitaker clips it into the near post behind Venta, cleared by Gogic. Josh Campbell is trying to get in there as well. Hibs have it again with Levitt right hand side this time, and Yuan takes it from him and clips a square pass to Bushiri, then Obita down the line, Jair Tavares ahead of him, looks to hold off the challenge of Fraser, turns inside, then heads back from whence he'd come, Hibbs uh, keeping the ball, but uh, looking to create something here, having led and then seen themselves pegged back. Good work from uh, Yuan. Now he's direct, heading towards the edge of the area, and his shot looked as if it might have clipped the outside of the post, and Hemming possibly got a touch on it as well. I just thought, uh, yeah, great save from Zach Hemming. He's down low. Wonderful twist and turn and move there from, uh, from Eli Yuan, and the strike's going in the bottom corner, if not for the... The hand of Zach Hemming, really, really good save there. Down to his right hand side to Denar Yuan, who flashed one wide in the first half. And he was uh, on target there. Good goalkeeping as Hibbs respond to a positive start to the second half from St Mirren. Corner kick Hibbs, left hand side, they take it short. Levitt tries to get the ball in the box, took a deflection, Mandron heads it further clear. Towering onto it is Newell, down the right-hand side for Hibbs. And he's caught late. And uh, that will be a free kick for Hibbs. It's also uh, a yellow card. It's a yellow card all day long. It 
his brilliant play, it really was from Joe Newell, picking the ball up, he was forced out wide, Richard Taylor's all over him, he takes a touch past him, Taylor thinks he can get there, he can't, completely wipes him out, and this is a really good situation for Hibernian to put a dangerous ball into the box, it's going to be Newell that takes it. Yeah, it's just about five yards from the corner flag on the right-hand side, so ideal for the left foot of Joe Newell to uh, try to arrow this in and give Hibs the chance to get themselves in front again. Past the hour mark, 61 minutes, 1-1. Radio Scotland in Paisley. Newell with the free kick towards the back post, punched away by Hemming. And the clearance is completed by McManaman. In goes a beat to win an important header, one against one against uh, Strain. Hibs have it with uh, Jair Tavares, left-hand side. Back towards Levitt. Newell shouting for it in the middle of the pitch. Looks to angle one back towards Jair Tavares. It doesn't stick. But it is kept in until the offside flag goes up against Rocky Bashiri. A couple of subs on the way, Bright. Yeah, a couple for St. Min, Michael Mandron's game is over, as is Caelan Boyd months. The players coming on will be Kian Abakus and Olusanya. Double change for Sue, appreciate it for doing the Yeah, Mandron's had a, a kind of quiet evening. Obviously, get two in his last game here. Um, but he's not managed to look a threat this evening. Olusanya's pace will certainly cause the Bernian problems. Boyd Munz coming off. I mean, Boyd Munz has looked tidy at times. He's really good on the ball. He's got a wonderful switch of play on him. I think he just took a knock a couple of moments ago as well, but Bacchus on. Two good substitutes to bring on for St Mirren. Bacchus will bring a lot of energy, and all you saying, I'll carry that threat in behind. I've watched him a few times, and he is so, so quick, but when he gets there, sometimes his brain's still going the same speed as his legs are. He doesn't have the composure. Nicely poised, 63 minutes in. St Mirren one Hibs one, that double switch for Simeon Lasagna and Bacchus. And a free kick for uh, Hibs midway inside their own half. Fish to Whitaker, given away by the youngster. Not too many mistakes on his behalf tonight, but that was one. throw in for Hibbs just underneath us Hibbs with the 11 who started the match from Whitaker to uh, Yuan and back little pass inside for Levitt and he gets it away to Obita crossing the halfway line wide is Jair Tavares jinking his way in now he heads for the byline can he deliver fired in low cleared by Richard Taylor with uh, Venta trying to get on the end of that cut back. It was good play from Jair Tavares. And now the response from uh, St Mirren and Olusanya full of running up front. It's gone behind for the goal kick. Marshall, Fish and then Whitaker. Back goes Greg Kilty, snapping at the heels of the youngster. Gets his pass away again for Levitt. And crossfield to Obita. Back it goes to Rocky Bashiri. St Mirren swarming around, looking to win it back. Obita under pressure, and all he can do is fight it back to Marshall. David Marshall launches it up, looking for the head of Eli Yuan. Flicked on, but nobody in behind to benefit. Time for Taylor. Back it goes for Hemming. Zach Hemming pulling off a couple of really important saves tonight for St Mirren when you think about that the save at the base of the post from Yuan and that double save when he managed to bail out Gogic who'd already made a big mistake in the match 1-1 and the ball with O'Hara who equalised for St Mirren he fires it down the line but it slips out of play before Olesanya could get there and it's a throw in for Hibbs. 
Where's this match going to go from here, Tomo? Can you say anything with great confidence? Well, I mean, the, the, the kind of really bright start that St. Mirren had to the second half kind of drained a wee bit. You're thinking maybe the substitutes are going to have an impact um, for St. Mirren. I mean, the game's just getting a wee bit more stretched, certainly, than it was in the first half. I think Hibs have reacted quite well to being pegged back 1-1. They've, uh, they've not folded. The game's very much in the balance. It would be difficult to predict either side going on and getting three points, but Hibs have just settled themselves again after um, getting pegged back to 1-1. And St Mirren won themselves a corner kick, goes behind off of Vita. Corner kick out on the right-hand side. Brian, a chance for Hibs. Yeah, Hibs substitution. Young 16-year-old Rory Whittaker, his night is over. Coming on, the player he replaced tonight, Lewis Miller. Yeah, Lewis Miller just emerging from the, the dugout. Looks as if he was staying in there as long as possible on a nippy night in <laughs> Paisley. Uh, but into the action he comes. And uh, Rory Whittaker hasn't done himself any harm with his first start tonight for Hibs. Getting a good reaction from the fans and applauding them back. Yeah, he should be happy with his performance. Certainly for such a young guy, I think, you know, coming to Paisley, playing against St Mirren, difficult opponents, I think he should be pretty pleased he's acquitted himself well. So can St Mirren get some joy from this corner kick? Cluster of players around the penalty spot, and a couple close in. Tanzer whips it in at the near post. Hibs get it clear. Simiron look to get the ball back into the danger zone. Good work from McMenamin. His cross flicked away, and the long range shot in the end is uh, pretty much straight at David Marshall. McMenamin did really well. He's had a quieter evening uh, tonight, but he does so well to find some space in the byline. Does the hard bit, then the cross isn't that good. It comes to Tanza. 25 yards out and he tries an audacious volley, gets it on target right enough, but straight at David Marsh without any real pace on it. Yeah, it was his right foot, wasn't it? I think if it had been on his left, it might have been a bit more troublesome for the goalkeeper. Will Fish to Lewis Miller now at right back for Hibbs. Fired inside, lovely take and turn, and now he's away, Eli Yuan, he threads it through for Dylan Venter, heading for the byline, turns it back, and Hibbs are back in front here. It's a great goal, but I'm just obviously I'll be getting checked. I think Vente is very tight on the, the through ball, but great play from Hibbs. Wonderful turn from Johan to start it. The slide rule pass for Vente running in behind, and just when you thought he was going to play, he took an extra touch right to the byline almost, across the face. And there was two of them at the back post lining up, waiting to put it in the back of the net. I think it was Joe Newell in the end that set that scored it, but. Uh, Wonderful goal there from Hibbs. Yeah, Richard Taylor's far too keen to try and win the ball when it goes into um, Eli Yuan's feet. Gets spun so, so easily. He takes off. It's good movement from Vente to go down the outside. The pass to him was lovely, weighted, and you're right, he takes that extra touch, which kind of, you're thinking he's going to flash it. It catches St. Bernard on the wheels right across the face, and John Newell couldn't miss. Doesn't look like there's going to be a check, or maybe they've already checked it. Yeah, maybe. It wasn't uh, as tight as I thought, but... Uh, well, it's just holding on. Yeah, well. Fing yeah. Finger in the ear for Stephen McLean, so VAR is having a, a look at this now. Yeah, I, I think they just wait for all the, the celebrations to go the full distance and then... Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, look, it, it was tight, but this is yeah. now my view. Is this what we want in football, where offside is a definitive yes or no, but... Do we really want to be chalking off so many goals for what are, you know, marginal inches at times? Depends if it's against the <laughs> North Coast. <laughs> Brian, have you had a look? Yes, I have, Rob. And um, I know it was tight on Saturday against Aberdeen. I think this one is a bit more clear cut, and I think this goal will be given. Yeah. Goal given, and Hibbs back in front. Really good goal, really good goal yeah, from Hibbs. And as I said just uh, a couple of minutes ago, they, they reacted well to getting uh, pegged back to 1-1. They didn't panic. They got themselves 
back with a foothold in the game, the spreading it side to side <coughs> and, and keeping possession. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, Nick uh, Montgomery will be happy with, uh, with this performance from Hibs. If they're able to see it through and get three points, he'll be absolutely over the moon. Brilliant again from Eli Yuan. He is on fire at the moment, and here he goes again, powering down the right-hand side. Hibs number seven clips it back for Campbell. His cross is blocked by Taylor, and the ball goes out for a, a Hibs throw. And I was just going to mention that the part of Yuan, Yuan in the goal, uh, just the way he took the ball in, let it run across his body, the turn, the pace to get away, then the ball slipped down the side for Venta, and he rolled it across goal for Joe Newell to score. But when Eli Yuan does that sort of stuff, he's uh, pretty hot to handle, Michael. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt. It's made a big difference. You know, a moment like that opens the game up and Hibs score from it. Obviously, the, the big thing is Hibs want to see more of that and less of the... You know, really poor decision making that can happen at times. Same run of a free kick just inside the, the Hibs half as they look to come back again. Josh Campbell scored the opening goal. Mark O'Hara's penalty levelled it up, and now Joe Newell with a tap in his third goal of the season has Hibs back in front and uh, hoping they can go up a couple of places in the. Premiership placings by the time we finish tonight, but St. Mirren will have other ideas. Strain with the free kick, and now McMenamin coming in off the right hand side, clips it back post. And uh, St. Mirren were throwing plenty in, including Richard Taylor trying to get on the end of that. Looks like it's gone behind for the goal kick. And I think Joe Newell is part of that defensive operation as well to stop that squeezing in. It was a delicious ball and it really was from the left foot of Ryan Strain to the back post. Really hard to defend. Again, bodies throwing themselves at it. St Mirren claiming coming off a Hibs player last, but I think it was Richard Taylor who got the final touch and goes behind. St Mirren haven't asked enough questions from open play. Again, that comes from a set play uh, situation. From open play, David Marshall has not been worked enough from St Mirren and that's been a big problem for them this evening. Ryan Strain on the ball, and he is uh, Campbell for company, breathing down his neck. Now he's on to Gogic as the ball is shifted around by St Mirren. They work it down the left-hand side for Tanzer to try to get the cross in. Lewis Miller blocks it. It's gone out for a throw-in close to the corner flag. St Mirren try again to get themselves in behind. Yuan is back, helping out with the defensive effort, and the ball goes out for a Hibs throw-in. St Mirren 1, Hibs 2, 74 minutes on the clock. It's going to be the Australian Miller with the throw-in, helped on by Campbell to Venta, who lofts it across. And uh, Jair Tavares get, takes a lovely couple of touches to get control of it. When he played it in behind, Josh Campbell was offside. But again, really good play under pressure from Jair Tavares for Hibs. Hemming thumps the ball forward for uh, St Mirren. Out for a throw in left-hand side, Tanzer flings it back towards Taylor. Ohara for Gogic, and alongside him on the halfway line is Marcus Fraser, driving forward with the ball. Ryan Strain to Conor McMenamin, his left foot angling the ball into the box, headed away by Fish. Tavares is there to roll it back, and Obita clears for Hibs up to halfway. A shout from uh, Gogic, down goes Campbell, off the ball. No free kick. St Mirren work it forward to Olesanya. Collects it well out on the right-hand side, linking with Strain. Back it goes. As St Mirren look to create something from the, the right-hand side. Hibs get it clear for the moment. St Mirren chasing an equaliser for the second time in the game. O'Hara in the middle of the pitch. 
works it wide to Scott Tanzer. Always room for the cross, floated back post, and that allowed David Marshall to come for it and grab possession, and he did like the challenge, the Hibs goalkeeper, and there's a cluster of players with the referee right in the middle. Yeah, I think it's Conor McBenamin, he was never going to win the ball. It's a big floaty cross from Scott Tanzer. David Marshall comes out and catches it. I don't think it was an elbow, I think it was more of a kind of flailing arm, but McMenamin booked. And, and, a, on. and a couple of changes coming, Brian, for St Mirren. Yeah, two changes coming, Conor McMenamin and Greg Kilty are going to be replaced. The players coming on out is Grieve, who's already had an impact off the bench on a couple of occasions this season. He's coming on, as is Lewis Jamieson, who Stephen Robinson told us before the match just how well yes, the young lad have been doing in training. Well, the Saints fans are about to find out exactly what he's all about. Do you like him, Tomo? Yeah, I mean, he's been out on loan. Uh, I think uh, Clyde and was it Inverness. But, yeah, I mean, I've not obviously not seen a lot of him in uh, St Mirren Jersey, but it's an opportunity for him this evening. I think Conor McMenamin's not at his best evening, so he'll go out to that right-hand side and see if he can provide a bit of quality for St Mirren. They've lacked in the final third this evening. On comes the 21-year-old then on the right side of the attack and uh, Alex Grieve to the left of Olusanya and uh, certainly Grieve does have the goals touch about him and Simmer hoped that uh, he can strike tonight as they look to get at least something out of this game. Slipping was David Marshall as he cleared from that uh, free kick and as you heard that went down well with the Simmer and fans. Out for a throw in on the halfway line. Strain takes it. Olusanya lays it off. Bacchus to Taylor. And across to the left for Tanzer, who's had plenty touches on the ball. First touch for Alex Grieve, and then he's uh, clattered into by Miller. No real need to make that challenge. He's handed Sitmir in a free kick. Yeah, he was facing away from goal was Alex Grieve. I actually do think he gets the ball, but he comes through Alex Grieve before he gets there. St Mirren will launch this into the box. They have looked their most dangerous from set plays tonight. Free kick, left-hand side, swinging into the box. Newell got his head to it. The man whose goal at the moment makes the difference in this game. A tap-in for the Hibs captain as his team... 2-1 in front. A couple of throw-ins on the far side, the right-hand side for St Mirren. Back it goes to Gogic. Square of him is Taylor. And he fires it out wide left. In comes the cross ball. It's a really good cross ball as well. And it was just begging for the finishing touch as it flew through the six-yard box. He's got to get something on that. He really does, all you saying. I think he's injured himself in the process, but the quality of the ball in was absolutely phenomenal. He looks as though he's there. Just either misses it or unless it's a bit deceptive from this angle. Look to me, though, he should have been making contact with the ball. I think the only way he made the t hit the target there was he colliding with the post, Tom, and we actually, I think his momentum took him into the, the upright as he was trying to get on the end of that teasing ball in. Great delivery. Hibbs launch it down the pitch. Fraser heads it away. A header bulleted back towards Marcus Fraser, which he probably didn't fancy too much. And Hibbs roll the ball out wide for Jair Tavares. On the byline, tries to turn it back. He's done really well to nick that back to around the penalty spot. And no takers for Hibbs. It was a great little cut back that he managed to manufacture. If Hibbs can't score again, there might be no way back for St Mirren as we edge our way into the last 10 minutes. They haven't looked like scoring all night. You know, as much as they put some uh, really decent deliveries into the box, you've never felt as though they were going to score a goal and there's not been no real moments of quality in the final third, no kind of passes through or incisive passes or shots on goal. It's been fairly tepid from St Mirren. 
I mean, they started, the, you know, they finished the first half well and started the second half well as well. They got themselves level, but they've failed to kick on. It definitely is. They've taken the foot off a little bit, and credit to Hibs when the when the game went 1-1, they, they, the, they were the side that started to gain a little bit of control in the game again, and now they're 2-1 up. Alex Grieve bustling his way through, and he hooks a shot across goal, and you just felt that was going to creep inside the post. It's gone narrowly wide. We talked about him having the goal touch. Well, he very nearly produced there. That was so good, that from Alex Grieve. Out of nothing, really. He's managed to bustle his way through and fashion an angle to get the shot away. And I mean, it's inches. Aye, I mean, I thought it was going to creep in itself, and if that wasn't, I was just expecting somebody else to bundle yeah. it across the line. So close for St Mirren. He did really well to keep his balance, and the angle's virtually impossible, but he somehow gets a shot away, and it just trickles past that far post. He does have that knack, doesn't he, of finding a goal, and quite a few of them have come <laughs> late on in games as well. Hibs are going to respond, Brian, with a couple of changes here. Dylan, yeah, Dylan Levitt is his game is over. As is Dylan Venti is over. The two players coming on, James Jago is coming on, and also the young 16-year-old Josh Landers, who made his debut, coming on in the semi-final at the weekend. So if your name is Dylan, your game's over at uh, any moment now. <laughs> as uh, Venti comes off and uh, Josh Landers, uh, another two 16-year-olds on the night. One's gone off earlier, another one's about to come on. Venter and Levitt coming off. Jimmy Jago will slot into the, the Hibs midfield. And is that a keep what we have move, Michael well, Jago coming on? Well, it's not so much that. I think you saw Levitt, I think he went down on the edge of the box with Tramp or whatever, and there's tightness, and he's rolled his socks down as well. So I think he'd run his race, needed to change. Landers is not coming on just yet, but when you talk about uh, Rory Whitaker and what a good size he is as a 16-year-old, Landers looks even bigger. Yeah, he's a big boy. James Jago getting his Sunday name. 83 minutes on the electronic clock in the corner of the ground. Hibs can see the finishing line at this stage and uh, they might be able to make life a bit easier for themselves as well as the ball is given away very cheaply by Tanzer Yuan flicks it on Venta heading to the byline tries to turn back, loses his footing Gogic intercepting and up goes an offside flag a good deal later than it could have gone up It's just the way now isn't it? Five seconds after the bit of play that was involved in but Great to see Landers when he does come on, coming on. Really pleased that Nick Montgomery's giving young players an opportunity. It's a I good message, isn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. It really is for the club, and it's brilliant for the other younger players that are in the Hibernian Academy to look and see that the pathway's there and they're getting the opportunities. Yeah, this is, you know, these are two 16-year-olds. It's yeah. not as if we're talking about 20-year-olds, 21-year-olds. This is proper young, young guys that are getting a chance here. Great run by Joe Newell for Hibbs. Works the one two. Well, what a goal that would have been had he found the touch to finish six yards out. Really good play, forcing his way into the box and almost scoring again. Great feet from him as well out on the left hand side. He's having a big say in the match at the moment. I thought he could have struck it first time. You know that when he played the one two and the ball came back to him, I thought it, it came back to him you know, at a good pace to. It's on his left side, just wrap his left foot round at first time. So here comes part two of that double switch, which didn't happen at the time. Josh Landers coming on, Brian. Yeah, Josh Landers is coming on Dylan Venti off. I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't use the two of them at the same time, because that's now used up, all, although it's only the third substitution, it's used up the three opportunities they have to make substitutions, and we've still got, what, we've got six minutes left, Rob? Yeah. Plus stoppage time then. You would have thought, being 2-1 up, you'd have wanted to try and maybe keep a substitute for late on. There's two subs that could still have come on, but not any longer. I see what you mean about Josh Landers. He's a, he's a lump of a lad, isn't he? <laughs> They're producing them pretty, pretty big off the assembly line. At the Hibs training ground, on comes Landers. Late on here in Paisley. We're inside the last five minutes. 
and uh, Hibs 2-1 up here and they'll go up three places in the Premiership if they can uh, get maximum points here tonight they'll go above Motherwell, Aberdeen and Dundee not quite above Hearts but they will be level on points with the other half in Edinburgh if they can keep what they have which is this 2-1 advantage in Paisley and it's going to be a, a rare defeat for St Mirren but there's time for them to produce late on Strain rolls it forward Jameson tries to get himself involved good challenge by Jago the ball towards the corner flag on the far side there's a real urgency about St Mirren as there would be at this stage 2-1 down corner kick for the home team on the right hand side in it comes low towards the near post Hibbs trying to hustle it clear back into the box of Bita's header away then it was Campbell and uh, Bacchus looks to switch it across to Grieve on the left hand side and there's a collision involving Lewis Miller who was that for St Mirror and he's still down whoever it was Richard, Richard Taylor, Taylor yeah I mean he's late into the challenge it's a definite free kick but he's come off loss I think he lands slightly awkwardly he's getting to his feet now probably just winded but yeah it wasn't a great delivery in from uh, Jameson to the near post you know, you've got all those bodies in there give the ball a chance to get past the first man into an area where it can be attacked time is ticking a little bit too quickly at the moment for St Mirren two and a half minutes left of the 90 and then it's all about stoppage time Tamsar clears for the home team up towards Olesanya in goes Fish but he loses it forward goes Grieve sliding in was Jago the ball played forward and headed away again by Miller forward it goes and Landers chasing is held off by Taylor, the ball goes back to Hemming and Zach Hemming fires one forward Obita gets his head to it for Hibbs flicked round the corner by Campbell for uh, Jair Tavares on the far side, Hibbs looking to get the ball up the pitch and keep the ball up the pitch, keep it out of harm's way as St Mirren chase a second leveller on the night Another player down, another slight delay, and we're 90 seconds left of the 90 minutes. What a reaction it would be to Cup semi final disappointment for Nick Montgomery and Hibbs if they can uh, make a significant move up the table. There are going to be, at the moment, five minutes added to the 90. The ball is with Gogic, and he switches it across to Tanzer. Good control on the halfway line. He's off and running. Grieve in front of him. Back it goes for Taylor. Taylor fires it forward to Olesanya, left-hand side, heading for the byline. Twists back the way. Good feet from him. The ball is forced out in the end. St Mirren in a hurry with the throw. Taylor on his right foot swings in across. Headed away by Fish. On the halfway line, O'Hara for the home team, the captain. His penalty levelled it up earlier. Gogic angles one out to the left-hand side. Taken on the run by Tanzer. Great ball in by Tanzer. And a towering header away by Bushiri. Yuan completes the clearance. But back comes St Mirren again. Hungry for an equaliser. Bacchus in possession, but he's lost it. And now Landers on the break for Hibbs, the youngster racing back as Gogic to get there first and turn the ball back towards Hemming. Inside, stoppage time at the end of the 90 minutes in Paisley. A minimum of five to be played. That's how close Hibbs are to their first win in seven games. A lunging challenge by Lewis Miller. 
close to halfway had uh, Stephen Robinson almost jumping on the pitch. A silly, naive, no need. He was never going to win it. Uh, I think it actually came off his arm, but I don't know why he was diving in. All he needs to do is get to the player as the pass is coming and just hold your position. Make it difficult for them. Sliding in like that, just... To be honest, if the player had got the ball, he was on his backside and he was out the game. In this case, he he commits the foul and he gives someone the chance to pump it into the box. And it comes from uh, Jameson, header at the back post. Keeps it alive, shot at goal, blocked. It was bang on the money. Jameson has a go. That's him. Earn of plenty players forward, and now they could be caught out on the break. But Yuan loses the ball, and here come St Mirren again. It's Bacchus on the ball, squares it, shooting chance, it's a block, there's the finish! And St Mirren have surely rescued a point right at the death in Paisley. What a dramatic conclusion here, 2-2. Two -two. I mean, it comes from Eli Yuan's mistakes, St Mirren had the opportunity previously that it was blocked. Hibs win the ball back, Yuan looks as though he's going to counter, which would have been a good counter, gives it away with a really cheap giveaway, St Mirren then counter again. There's a ricochet from the first shot from Jameson, it falls straight into his path, he hit the first with his left, it rolls to his right, reverses it into the net, past David Marshall, a good finish from the young player, but again, very avoidable from Hibs' point of view. Really, really good finish from, uh, from Jameson there, there's a strike with the left foot first of all, and then he sticks yeah. it in the back of the net where he's just ways right but you were just saying before Rob about uh, what an impact Eli Yuan had on the, the second Hibs goal was it a huge impact on the equalising yeah. goal yeah. and that sums up Eli Yuan there you know so often he does just things that you shake your head at Hibs had a chance they had an overload and he's running forward with the ball and he just completely it's like he almost falls over it and gifts the ball back to St Mirren who, right. were, who were sorry? Who were who were committing players forward? St Mirren get the ball, they exploit the gaps, and um, yeah, two-two. Got to be honest, I don't think the second half performance deserves deserves that, but that is football for you, and you know that the St Mirren side never give up. Well, they've levelled it up, and St Mirren might not be finished. Ohara plays the ball in. Jair Tavares is back there, and a wild attempt at goal from. Uh, 25 yards out from yeah. uh, Bacchus, well off target. That's landed in Linwood. <laughs> that shot. That's local knowledge for you. <laughs> it's not that far away. What, uh, what a I, moment for Lewis Jameson. Yeah, though. fantastic. Fan, fantastic. Denied with his left foot, scored with his right. What a substitution for Stephen Robinson. Um, and St Mirren might not be finished. Well, no, I mean... Still a few minutes left, but it's certainly St Mirren that are doing all the pushing now. Hibs will be kicking themselves. St Mirren, as I had mentioned, hadn't really created too much from open play, as much as they've probed. Yeah. There was nothing clear-cut, and they were gifted that by Elie Well, you're, you're right, because this is now St Mirren's uh, game. They've got their tails up, they are pressing big time. But Gogic getting caught in the wrong position, giving away a free kick. Yeah, it was Landers slipping away from him and uh, pulled down by Alex Gogic, who gifts Hibs a late free kick and a, maybe a chance to create something here. I thought I was setting myself up pretty much when I said that this fixture guaranteed goals and we did 11 in the two games so far. Well, make that 15 in three, and that's an average tomo of five per game. I don't know whether it says more about the attackers or defenders <laughs> that. Maybe a bit of both. No Joe finished. Newell with the free kick for Hibbs, curled into the box. Gogic got his head to it, flicked away by Grieve. St Mirren looking to counter with Olesanya. Jair Tavares plays it back to Obita, slipping as he plays the ball forward. Bacchus in the way, flicked forward. And Olesanya tries to get there. And is there going to be one late twist in the tail? Well, there's a free kick. On the, there are three bodies down on halfway, and there's a free kick coming up, and it might be the last action of the game. Yeah, just a body check in the middle of the park. So I don't know, maybe just want to launch this one into the box, get everybody up. Stephen McLean's going to put him in the book here. Is it Josh Campbell? Could no, he booked Joe Neal. It was Joe Neal oh, was it? The, yeah. 
initial foul and John Hill's been yellow carded. So this free kick just a few yards inside the Hibs half. Well, this would be something else if St Mirren can uh, get the fifth goal of the game right on time. Ryan Strain to take the free kick for St Mirren, two goals each. Towards the head of Taylor, fired inside, cleared, and there is the final whistle, and it's a share of the points for St Mirren and Hibbs in Paisley with that uh, late equaliser from substitute Lewis Jameson rescuing a point for St Mirren just as it looked as if Hibbs were going to make a significant move up the table but denied in the end and uh, quite a game between these two three games and 15 goals they've uh, offered up so far this season. Hibbs went ahead through Josh Campbell 12 minutes in. A howler of a mistake by Alex Gogg. It's letting the ball slip under his boot. Venta set up Campbell to side foot in. The equaliser scored early second half by uh, Marco Hara. VAR picked up a shirt tag by Obita on Taylor. And uh, the St Mirren captain did his usual polished job from the penalty spot, sending Marshall the wrong way. Lovely attacking move from Hibbs, Yuan involved, Venter involved, and a tap-in for the Hibbs captain to have his team back in front again, and it looked as if that was the way it was going to finish as we entered the closing stages. But off the bench for St Mirren came 21-year-old Lewis Jameson. What an impact he had on the game as St Mirren threw everything at getting an equaliser, and it was the youngster who came up with the final blow in the game to claim a share of the points. Uh, a left foot shot blocked, but he followed up with his right and lashed one in past Hibbs goalkeeper David Marshall, and it finishes up in Paisley, a really entertaining game it's turned out to be. St Mirren 2, Hibs 2. On digital.